Hello my friends, I made this gypsy wagon for a little camper and uh, I decided to make it a, in a gypsy Vardo style and back uh, about 1500 years ago the Romani people came from India to Europe and then over into the British Isles and eventually to America and somewhere around 1850 they began to build these fancy wagons and live in them and uh, as you can see they were painted up brightly colored and often had intricate carvings on them and so when I decided to build a camper I thought it'd be kind of fun to build one in the style of a bardo and paint it up bright colored and, and uh, kind of travel around like a gypsy so my sister had this old pop-up camper that they were gonna send to the junkyard and so she gave it to me and I tore the, the camper off and built this utility trailer on the frame and I used that for a while so I decided to use this utility trailer as a as a basis for that uh, Vardo so I added a couple more rows of that uh, deck boards as you can see then I began to design my my Vardo I always like to make a drawing and uh, I decided to extend the sides out over the wheels and make the thing wider and so I needed these oh they're like uh, shelf brackets so I decided to cut those out of uh, two by eights and I needed 12 of them so I got to work on the bandsaw here sawing out those brackets now my design called for a bench running the full length of the uh, Vardo on each side and so with these brackets extending the width of the uh, unit here, I uh, can attach them right th by screwing them through those uh, sideboards there. And then I'll lay a piece of plywood across the top there and screw it down. Here I'll take one of these uh, two by threes and, and lay it down through there and, and then cut out my my top for the bench and this bench will serve as a place to sit in the Vardo and also that's what I'm going to build my walls on and the wall will be right out there on the very edge of that plywood so you can see how it sticks out past the, the wagon so there you can see those benches on each side and there'll be storage down underneath there now I'll get busy and build the walls the first thing I do is I lay down the, the top and bottom plate for the walls right side by side and I'll draw lines on there where my studs will go. I draw them right across, right across both uh, two by threes and uh, they're two feet apart and in this case one's longer than the other because that that roof is going to extend over the back end of this trailer here. There you can see all those brackets and how they'll hold up the shelves and this wall. I'm using screws to put these uh, two by threes together. They actually measure an inch and a half by two and a half. And so this will be a pretty lightweight wall and uh, still serve the purpose here of uh, attaching my three eighths plywood. So now we'll just set that wall up on there and you'll you'll see how the wall sets right out on the outside over those brackets and then uh, you have your bench there on the inside so I got both walls built now these things were wagon style so they have a curved roof on them all these Vardos have that in common and so I had to figure out a way to uh, make my curved um, rafters here so I laid a string on the floor and I nailed it to the floor right there and then I tied a pencil on the other end and uh, I used it like a big compass to draw that arc across that plywood now my design calls for these rafters to be four inches wide and eight feet long and so I can cut them right out of a sheet of plywood so I marked that arc the best I, I can and uh, begin to cut these things out. I 
intend to use two two of these uh, three quarter inch cut out rafters to make one rafter that's an inch and a half wide. You'll see what I mean here in a few minutes. I, I'll, I'll glue two of these together to make one rafter. So that first one that I cut out I'll use for a pattern for all the rest of them. And I've got it figured so that uh, I needed two sheets of plywood to uh, be able to get enough of these things made to go down through the uh, bardo every every two feet I'll put a rafter. So here I've got one made up and and I've got the bird's mouth cut in each end there and so it should sit right down on that plate there and then I can screw it right to the plate. So I had to cut out 14 of these to make my seven rafters. There's two for each, each rafter. Here I'm showing you how I put them together there. and I've got that bird's mouth right there that I've got to trace onto that other one and, and cut out. And uh, there's my pattern. I always keep that one separate so I, I, I use that one for the pattern each time. And uh, cutting that little notch out of there, they call that a, a bird's mouth, that just gives you more surface area uh, when you set this thing up on your, your wall. It gives you more surface area to, to screw it down to the plate. So here I am applying the glue and, uh, and then I'll nail the other one down to it with, I call them twisty nails spiral nails and uh, so we'll get it on there just right and, and uh, begin to nail that thing together and then I flip it over and nail from the other side and that'll that'll clamp those two together while that glue dries so like I say I always I always sit down a few days and I think about my project and make a few drawings and uh, that helps me remember what I decided to do as I'm going along. And basically the frame for this uh, project is uh, the studs are two feet apart. And then these rafters sit right on top of where those studs are. There you can see how they, they all line up right there. So it's a pretty simple frame. But it, uh, it'll be sturdy and it'll work pretty well, I think, for uh, attaching that 3 8 plywood. Okay, so now I get started putting this plywood up and I decided to use this, this 3 8 plywood. It's exterior grade and it's real lightweight. So here I've got my uh, soffits built in. Now I'm starting to put that uh, 3 8 plywood up on the roof and that that plywood will bend right around there. It's on lengthwise so it'll bend. And there it is all, all uh, finished. Uh, the frame's finished and the plywood's all up. So I've basically got my box built. And in a second we'll take a walk around and you can see inside this thing. Uh, what I'm going to be doing. So, oh, this shows you those brackets and how that side juts out from the side of the, the trailer there. There's that little awning that sticks out over the back. Of course, the door's in the back of this thing. All right, here we go. We'll go inside and uh, show you the ceiling. That'll be pretty when it's painted up. And uh, there's that bench down each side, and down in that further end is where uh, the bed will be. So I'll have to build a little plywood platform for that. And in each side I've got these big windows. I like to have big windows so I can see out and you're not feeling like you're confined. Even, this thing, even though this thing's only 10 feet long, when you, when you walk inside it's, it actually looks quite spacious. Okay, so now it's time to paint. And I'm in kind of a hurry because I want to take this this Vardo to an antique tractor and 
equipment uh, show this weekend and so what I plan to do is get my 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 undercoat of uh, paint on this thing these Vardos like we said earlier are uh, painted up bright colors and, and kind of fancy and uh, I've chosen red and green and a gold color and uh, really this is just a base coat and then uh, later on I can add some uh, scroll work and some some pretty woodwork there and maybe some artwork uh, with uh, contrasting color and it, it should pop right out on that dark green outside and on the gold I can use a, a darker color and, and do some kind of fancy business there too here I'm just uh, cutting this in because I wanted the bottom part of the uh, back end to be gold like those brackets are so I'm painting like a wild man here to uh, get this thing done in time to take to the show okay so here we are we're kind of finishing up this end and that'll wrap up the paint job on this thing um, well the first coat anyway here we go with a rubber roof installation I'm very fortunate to have a friend who is a professional commercial roofer and he does a lot of rubber roofs. I called up uh, Louie and I asked him if it was possible for him to find some white rubber because I wanted this roof to be white and that will reflect the, uh, the sunlight and maybe help to keep this Bardo a little bit cooler. And he was able to find some white rubber and uh, so after work Today he showed up with his apprentice and and they tackled this little job and we're trying to get it done before it gets dark. And so they'll go right at it here. So I want to thank my friends here for coming over and doing such a nice job on this rubber roof. Uh, the rubber is, is such a good idea because it's it's waterproof of course and it's lightweight and a, a good job like this will last many many years. All right, so I've got this thing finished enough so I can take it camping this weekend. Uh, got it painted up and the roof's on. I got screens in the windows so the mosquitoes won't eat me alive over there. And um, I got the platform down for the bed, threw a mattress in there. And my curtains, I'll, I'll get those hung up. A couple big uh, bath towels on each side will be my curtains. I plan to make some shutters for the windows, but I just didn't have time to do that. So, uh, did I mention that this will also double as uh, a playhouse for my grandchildren? I'll take this up to this property that my son owns, and it'll set up there, and when they go up there, they can sleep in there and, and use it for their own little house up there. So, okay, I'll see you over at the tractor show. Here I am at the show, and there's my 1939 John Deere tractor. There's my beautiful curtains inside there, and I can I can let those down if it starts to rain. And sure enough, it started to rain. In fact, it poured, but it was nice and dry in the gypsy wagon. And here's my grandson. 